Thank you for joining us for the latest episode from Backstage Library Works. My name is Casey Cheney and I am the Vice President of the Automation Services Department here at Backstage. Today I'll be discussing authority control, what it means, and why you need it. I've chosen this topic because it is a question that comes up quite frequently, especially when libraries are trying to convince their dean or some other upper management that it is a necessary task. Today we'll briefly touch on a few different topics, including defining what authority control is and the goals of authority control, and we'll discuss briefly what new avenues are being explored. In the broadest of definitions, authority control is a process that organizes bibliographic information by using a single distinct spelling of a heading. These distinct spellings are considered authorized, meaning that they are the accepted and official spelling of that heading. They are meant to be one of a kind, but unfortunately there are still a number of undifferentiated headings out there, and this means that they are not unique. Additionally, authority control is the consistent use and maintenance of these official forms of headings, whether they're names, subjects, uniform titles, etc. The authorized versions of these headings are maintained in large authority databases, such as the name and subject authority files from the Library of Congress and the Libraries and Archives Canada. And there are many other authority databases as well. These authorized terms are inserted into the bibliographic records where appropriate during the cataloging process. The process of authority control essentially creates a link between bibliographic records and these authority files, which therefore provides an underlying structure of the catalog. And the key words I want to point out on this slide are consistent and maintain. Whatever policy your institution develops, it will be key to be consistent with your authority control processes and then to continually maintain your headings to ensure that the catalog remains updated. Ultimately, authority control helps library staff, but more importantly, it helps the patron experience. By having proper authority control, the patron or staff member can find an item from known information, identify an item with limited information, collocate items using a controlled vocabulary, evaluate and select an item, locate synonyms to aid in subject searching, and you may have your own benefits for authority control that you can think of as well. Whether you are part of a large academic library or a small special library, authority control is a task worth considering to aid both your staff and your patrons. So how do we go about achieving the previous goals through authority control? First, we begin with disambiguation. Let's take a quick look at this picture. This is an ambiguous picture in the sense that we're not really sure if it's supposed to be a duck or a rabbit. There is not one single thing that denotes it as one over the other. The same thing happens with headings that appear in a bibliographic record. There may be more than one author by the same name, so unless we find a way to make them unique or disambiguate them, our searching capabilities will not be as fine-tuned as we would like. So for example, if we were to search a catalog by author, we'd want to make sure that all of the titles by that author are returned. And furthermore, we'd want to exclude results for authors of a similar or identical name but are not the same as the author we are looking for. During the cataloging process, the cataloger should take the time to perform manual authority control by disambiguating the headings to ensure that the correct unique heading is applied to all titles from that author. So let's say we have an author named John Smith. As we can see from the results here from the Library of Congress name authority file, there are many gentlemen by the name of John Smith that have aided in the creation of some sort of work, and this list does continue on for quite some time. As a cataloger, we'd need to do some investigation to see which of these John Smiths is correct for our item. If none of them are correct, 
we need to look at how we might be able to disambiguate our John Smith from the generic Smith, John already present in the authority file. The cataloger will want to look for potential middle initials or birth and death dates as a place to start. Any other item by that author would then receive the exact same version of the name that was just entered into your bibliographic record. Authority control also ensures that names for an individual, titles for a work, or subjects are all standardized, thus allowing collocation through searching. This standardization includes correcting spacing, punctuation, the use of diacritics, potential misspellings, and even the order of words within a heading. An entry in one bibliographic record for an author should not vary from the entry of the same author in a different bibliographic record. But we know that human error creeps in, especially when policies are not in place, and all sorts of odd versions of a subject or a person's name may be entered. And when errors creep in, search functionality decreases and items become hidden from public view. When it comes to manual or even automated authority control, standardization happens partly through the use of cross-reference for XX fields within the authority record. These fields list alternate spellings or variant forms of the name, as you can see on this slide. An author may have many variants due to translations into other languages, but there will be just one authorized version of the name by which that author should be recorded. Through an automated authority control process, the bibliographic heading that contains any of these variant forms will be flipped to the authorized form. In a catalog that is properly maintained with the regular authority control procedures, if a patron were to search by one of these variant spellings or forms, all results that you would expect from searching the authorized name should be returned because the system would recognize the alternate form and suggest the correct results. For example, if a non-English speaker walks into your library and searches Twain, Merrick as the author, if the catalog is under proper authority control, the search results would refer the patron to all items by Mark Twain, or at least a reference that they should search by, Mark, by Twain, Mark. In a catalog without authority control, a search for Twain, Merrick would only return results for the few bibliographic records that might actually contain that version of the name, leaving all other works by Mark Twain hidden from view. Now please note that often an author that created works under multiple pseudonyms would have a separate authorized version for each pseudonym, so we're not trying to make all Samuel Clemens names turn into Mark Twain or vice versa. So if an author created under a specific identity, that separate identity is often maintained separately. Another example of standardization comes to play when a name or a place name is constantly changing. Utilizing authority control will keep the headings consistent with the current authorized version of the heading. A great example of this would be the artist currently known as Diddy. He has had numerous name changes over the years, and without proper authority control, a patron may not be able to find all the names by this artist if they are searching by any of the former versions of his name. When considering authority control and the goals of authority control, one really needs to also consider the state of other collections in the library. Authority control is no longer limited to just mark or traditional bibliographic information. More and more libraries are now exploring authority control options for EAD finding aids, XML metadata for digital collections, and other collections of various formats. Many institutions are aware that the way names and subjects are entered in this other metadata is sometimes far more inconsistent than their bibliographic data, especially if the metadata is stored in a shared repository and each institution has its own policies for entering headings. It's becoming more and more important that cleanup and standardization be implemented to have searching function in the same way that it does for your MARC data. 
If your catalog's discovery layer is able to connect searching between your bibliographic data and your other metadata, Authority Control will aid in helping all collections link together and become discoverable by your patrons in a way that they never previously experienced. What we've mostly talked about today is that because headings will become standardized across all collections and formats of metadata, both you and your patrons will be able to find more items within the collection that are of particular interest. There are no more items hidden in the dark recesses. Another important thing to consider is that with policies of regular maintenance, especially with the help of a vendor, the time spent correcting data on a large scale is reduced, thus freeing the time of your staff to focus on other projects. Participation in resource sharing networks, cooperative ventures such as NACO, dependence on internet search capabilities, and recent trends in outsourcing technical service operations are also strong arguments for libraries to implement proper authority control procedures. While it is true that some discovery layers don't connect the authority records to utilize the cross-reference fields, the process of authority control will still ensure that all headings for a single author are standardized and corrected, thus creating a benefit for your staff and patrons. What we are doing is we are preparing for a future with far better search capability. If your catalog and other metadata have not been under regular authority control, it would be worth considering a vendor to help with at least the initial data cleanup and potentially any ongoing maintenance of that bibliographic record and the authority files. There is a price to be paid for good authority control, but an even bigger price to be paid for not having good authority control. I invite you to view our other videos on our website to learn more about our authority control services. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions about our services, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you.